specific examples I might be thinking of may not be reported as accurately as they could be, but there's this kind of um, kind of a divide between how academics and researchers need to talk about a problem, and especially psychologists need to be kind of sufficiently cautious about how much they simplify their findings, because we know that research can only address one part of a problem. And the flip side of that is that the media and the public might not understand exactly the complexity and in order to interpret the results, they need a simplified message sometimes. I think generally um, the media tend to take research that's done and pick the most sensational um, things that they can find in it and slap it on the front of the paper and sometimes for a shock factor or a scare factor or something. No, I think it's definitely like a lot of it is very misleading. Like I think newspapers and stuff tend to pick up on like a small point of a research study and like blow it out of proportion where it doesn't really reflect what the study was actually about or what it actually shows. No, I think what happens with research is that the media are looking to, to portray a story in a certain way so they will cherry pick the facts that suit the way they want to present it. So I, I would never, I, sound, I don't want to sound apparent, but I would never generally trust simply what the media say about research. I do know that the media is reliant upon revenue and therefore many aspects of the media are entertainments as opposed to factual sources of information. It perpetuates this idea that the, the, um, that the idea of mental illness is a sensational issue, that um, there's a negative uh, connotation to it that um, and helps to perpetuate the stigma attached. Well, I think I think it's one of those things about research that when you come out and you say, oh, seven out of ten people or sixty-three percent of people, people don't tend to question facts. They don't tend to question statistics that you present to them. It's just kind of like, oh yeah, well of course, like sixty-seven percent of people, blah 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 blah, and um, they don't tend to, you know, say actually that's wrong, that's not true. I'm going to question that. Um, I think you can kind of, like, it starts a lot of myths about, like, psychology or anything like that, like, and people kind of take, you know, take one thing from it that might not be completely true, and then, again, it gets blow, blown out of proportion. The perceptions of psychology are presented in a particular way, um, which can be problematic, but, I mean, there are benefits to that as well. If there's a dramatisation of the way a psychology is presented, and it captures people's imagination and, and captures young people's enthusiasm, then maybe that's why they're signing up for the courses and why it's such a popular topic as well. To stay away from tabloids and stuff <laughs> um, would be a good idea. Um, possibly that like there could be like a specific outlet for psychologists and so on to report that stuff like on their own terms rather than relaying it to a journalist or whoever and then they go off and rephrase it and make it something that it's not. In the future um, we will have more uh, information on psychological topics and psychological research and psychological findings on, uh, on the media. But I think psychologists need to make a bigger effort to talk to the public and about their findings and help the public understand the complexity or the caution that we would have around making strong claims. Um, if they can do that, and if they can do it successfully, then I think it will increase public understanding of what psychologists do and how they do it. Because if psychologists don't start talking about their findings to the public, then other areas of, of, kind of, of research will. So um, psychiatrists and journalists or artists, they will all start to talk about these issues like depression and suicide or even um, memory and ageing and those sorts of topics then if they're, if they're spoken to um, the public um, by other people, psychologists get left out and we don't get to represent ourselves and so I think that if we don't start doing that, that public understanding of psychology could be threatened.